five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. How are you? This is Alex Bennett. And this is the Ramble. And uh, oh, well, uh, uh, ladies, no, 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 that's not what I want. Hold on a second. Boy, I'm screwing up like crazy here. Hold on. There we go. I'm sorry. Hi. How are you? See, I'm just out of it today again. I, I'm losing it. Look, I didn't turn on the light. Look. There we go. On the air. Now we're on the air officially. All right. Okay, and uh, well, you, you saw for a moment there something I didn't want you to see yet, which is, of course, uh, an interview we like to go to every couple of weeks in which we, uh, uh, oddly enough, at all, after all these years, I'm talking to an ex-wife. Ladies and gentlemen, that smiling face you see before you is that of Ronnie Bennett in Lake Oswego, uh, Oregon. Did I pronounce it? Is it Oswego. 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 It's not hard. There's even a town in your state called Oswego. Pronounced oh, really? The same way. Really? Well, it's interesting that you used to live in Portland. Uh, 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 where is it? Portland. Uh, was that Vermont or New Hampshire that you were in? Or Massachusetts? What is it? Portland, Massachusetts. Where, where were you before? Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine. Okay. You know. Me and my geography. And then, well, you know, a lot of people don't know the difference. And when I told friends that I was moving to Portland, Oregon, they said, aren't you already there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Some, well, you were born in Portland. Then Oregon. You, uh, yeah. And then you moved to Portland, uh, Maine. Portland, uh, but there were a whole lot of other that, places. In I, I know. But you moved to Portland, Maine eventually. And then from Portland, Maine, you moved essentially to Portland, Oregon. Yes, and it was hard to make that happen, that even things like moving companies and stuff would get confused. Really? They had to be real careful with everybody on the telephone that they understood this is two different states, happened to be the same name and city, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway. So, how have, uh, how you feeling? You okay? You moving along? Singing a song? Your hair's I'm growing good. out. Yes. Getting by. Yeah, yeah. Not too hard. It's, um... You know, you know, one of the things about having a serious disease as opposed to a flu when you go to bed for a week mm -hmm. um, is that there's a lot of maintenance, constant maintenance. Yeah. You have to keep track of appointments with the various doctors. And there are many doctors, many. Yeah. Uh, and they each do their own little thing. And then there are the medications. And I was concerned about way too many medications and then I realized that only I have only four prescription drugs that's not bad for somebody with I have more than that and, um, and all the rest of things people take all the time like calcium and vitamin D and you know that sort of stuff yeah. that are non-prescription um, and I just hate counting them out and then, you know, those little boxes you can get and you put the pills in each little box or each day yeah well, they don't have a place for 30 minutes before meal, which is why I have to take <laughs> one of them. <laughs> you can't just put them together with the rest. <clears throat> and then I got so fed up with it, after all this long, counting them out every day on Saturday, that about a month ago, I said, you know, I'm just going to do it every day as I need them. Well, that's stupid. Now how many bottles do you have to open all week, you know, and pour things out? Yeah. So I went back to counting them out. Well, exactly. everybody has their own way of doing it. My uh, my wife has uh, these little glassine packets, and so oh, she they come from the pharmacy she, that well, way, right? Well, no, 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 no. She just buys them in bulk, okay, and then she uh, lays them out on the bed in you know like fifteen of them or whatever, fifteen my portions, goodness. and then she drops them into these ba ba uh, these uh, little baggies, which to me seems a bit extreme so i have one of those you know those boxes those plastic boxes with the day of the weeks for a month and then i just drop one in each and another one in there and then another one in there 
But I just thought, where's the the inventive genius who doesn't come up with a thing where you take your pills and uh, you, you have a box or something, that, and and you just simply throw them into this chute and it spits them out, <laughs> right? What a funny idea! <laughs> well, it's not a funny idea. Somebody should have been it and spits them out into the in- for shape, huh? for size, for color. You know, there's a whole lot of things you're asking one shoot to do. No, 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 no. But I'm not putting all the pills in at once. I'm putting, like, uh, I'm putting in my, my Cialis in there. And then it'll boom, 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 boom. And I'll put the next one in there and boom, 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 why, why should I have to do them when you could have a machine there's that could? There's no pills. Huh? Why, no, why shouldn't you? I don't understand why you well, shouldn't. No, but why should I have to sit there putting in? Well, there are pharmacies, Alex. You see them on TV that they send your pills to you already in the packets that your wife makes for herself. Yeah, but I'm not going to one of those pharmacies. I'm going to the one that gives me well, but really. But what I'm saying, if you if you were really serious about this, you would find one of those pharmacies. No, but I can't because I have to use Express Scripts, and Express Scripts is only taken by Walgreens, and Walgreens doesn't do it. So really, this is really an old person. But, conversation. but I do no. save two thirds on my medicine this way. So I, you know, but believe me, what I used to pay, I, they should put them in a little packet for me. This is really an old person's conversation. It, well, this is an old person's show, I've decided. <laughs> you know, I mean, let's face it, it, it at 79, you know, what, it, what, what uh, is important to me is not important to most people in America. That's why I don't have the listenership I should have. If I was giving out, like, you know, uh, shopping hints or uh, makeup hints or something like that, I'd have millions of viewers. But because I'm an old person and people don't really want to hear from old people, uh, I, uh, I, I enjoy a rather small audience that goes, oh, let's listen to the curmudgeon tonight. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I've, I've learned that that, you know, but, but at seven, look, at our age, this is what concerns us. You yes. Know? Yes. And it's terrible that we have to be concerned by it. When, when you were younger, did you ever think about, the, you forgot to go to your doctor once a year. Oh, I, whenever I'd show up, he'd look at the chart and say, good grief, it's been five years. Yeah, exactly. And how lucky for me that I went 76 years with nothing more serious than a bad flu once in a while. That was it. That's pretty good run of being really, really healthy. You know, And now everything that might have happened to me in my whole life is getting crammed into the very end of my life. Yeah, it, it, all of a sudden, the good Lord says, I think I'll throw it all at you at once. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You've uh, gotten off too easy for so, for three quarters of a century, so let's try this. Well, you know, my problems, uh, I you know, I have little niggling problems. You know, the, the neuropathy in the feet, or I have a, a hernia, or I have, you know. is Nothing that's important, except for maybe the possibility of the prostate cancer, which, again, isn't important at my age because it's, you know, it's we mild. Yes, we understand. Oh, I found out from my doctor, the other, my, my main physician who I was seeing, and I told him about this thing with the, with the prostate, and he says, eh. He says, at your age, uh, 70 per, I said, I hear 70% of people at my age have prostate cancer, and they go, 70? He says, I hear it's a little bit higher. He says, when you reach 90, if you're still alive, your chances of having it are 100%. <laughs> yes. He said, so, you know, don't even worry about it, you know. But uh, so, I mean, I have what I call, I mean, compared to your situation, I've got nothing. But it's just things that make you grouchy all the time. Like this this thing that wouldn't go away, and I couldn't figure out what it was, and neither could some doctors. And then I found one and said, oh, five prednisone, that will take care of it, you know. And it, and it. The f- after the first day of taking the pills, I went. I feel seventy-five percent better. Better. So, but so for See, me, I mean, that's the upside of um, of med- There's so many things that we haven't been able to find either a prevention or cure for, like most cancers that are in that <coughs> are in that box. Um, but there are some things 
that we've done really well on. It's one of the things that drives me around the bend about anti-vaxxers. Oh, I hate them. That starting with World yeah. War II, when, when uh, penicillin was invented, antibiotics and vaccines just kept coming one after another after another until all childhood diseases practically were wiped out. And now we have, because of the anti-vaxxers, the biggest outbreak of measles pretty much since you and I were kids. Well, I hate the anti-vaxxers because they really, I think, have killed people. You know. Yes, it does. You know, and, and it's, it's, it's not just little kids who get most of those kinds of diseases, but old people, too, who, you know, I, I haven't thought to ask, and I should, is if you got all your vaccines when you were a kid, which I did over a period of whatever years they mandate, are those good for a lifetime? You know, I think about that when I see a group of little kids around and wondering how many of them are not vaccinated for measles. Uh, I think, for instance, I've been told, <clears throat> we asked about the measles vaccine, and they said, yeah, you could, you could take it at your age. Who is they, Alex? They are the pharmacy where they usually do vaccinations and things like that. And we asked our doctor, and he said, if you want to do it, it might not be the worst idea in the world, he said. But, you know, you, uh, you know what's strange? You, you get, to begin with, you do get a lot of immunities as you're growing up. That's why you get sick all the time when you're a kid. You know, that's why kids are... I didn't get sick all the time. Well, kids, kids get sick a lot. I mean, they go, they go to school, which is a real, you know... I mean, they have running nose type things all the time just because, yeah. they don't know, they're kids and they get those but things. The but the strange thing that happened to me, strange thing that happened to me, <laughs> is I had a girlfriend who got at like 22 years of age, um, uh, what How do you call How old were you? Huh? How old were you at the time? Uh, I, I, was, uh, um, I was in my 40s. Uh, yeah, okay, uh, go on uh, your story. Okay, well, wait a minute. She got a 22 or 23 chicken pox. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, she said, well, you, you know, I've got it. See, so have you ever had it? And I said, no. And she said, well, you're going to, you're, you're bound to get it. And I didn't get it. And then. Some people don't. Yeah. A couple of years later, I got a bad case of shingles on my face. Now, the only way you get shingles is if you had chicken pox as a kid. But I didn't have chicken pox as a kid. And somebody, some doctor suggested that what had happened is as a kid, I got a small case of it and didn't know it. Okay, it that, that I got it from some kid at school and it, I just got a little bit of it. And that was it. But it was enough to make me immune. So what happens is a lot of times you gain these immunities just through getting these things when you're kids. You know, sometimes it's good that you That's get That's well the, known. I mean, yeah. we've always known that. Yeah. So, you know, it, the only bad thing about chicken pox is it can come back later as shingles. That's the only bad thing about chicken pox. It just kind of rests in your nerve trunk or something and then decides to go crazy at some time. But uh, we, I still, I get an I haven't I had my pneumonia shot. You know, I had, uh, what have I had? I have uh, sh a shingle shot. I've had a shingle shot. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, I keep up with all my stuff. And you can do it now, at least in New York. I don't know about where you are, but you can do it at the pharmacy. You can do that here everywhere. Yeah. The federal government pays for it. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, uh, we're, we're all, we, we've gotten all our shots. I feel like I'm, I'm a puppy, a newborn puppy, and I've gotten all my shots. <laughs> And, uh, you know, but I mean, these people who are anti-vaxxers are, are just they're terrible. They're just terrible because they, they don't base anything on science, you no. know. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, I, I uh, so if your kid dies of the measles and you were an anti-vaxxer, fuck you. you know? Well, except that the problem is, is that you expose a whole lot of other people. Oh, yeah with the kids. Well, so. part of the problem we had here in New York... Why do you think there are so many cases of measles this year? The most since, like, something like just after World War II, I think I read. The reason, one of the reasons is here in New York is the Hasidic community. The Jewish Hasidics refuse to vax. But not and, the only ones. In, and in spite of the fact that their rabbis have told them it's okay. 
But they are not the only ones. Well, I know they're not the only that. ones, but they certainly have caused a big problem in this city. But not they're not the yeah. only ones. You okay. really must acknowledge that. And by the way, they then send those kids to schools, and those kids give yeah, other so, kids but some But so do the ones that aren't Hasids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, uh, there are people who do it for non-religious purposes, too, because they read... Uh, they read the internet too much, you know, and and these anti-vax posts that people make about our, you know. I read this morning that the state of California is looking to pursue some kind of action against four physicians who have given children, who have not given children vaccinations because their parents didn't want it, and California has recently become a state where no excuse is acceptable. Every every kid is vaccinated. Yeah. But doctors, but doctors are now. If the parent asks, apparently, or they're looking into these several doctors who seem to have not given the shots because the parents just asked them not to, and that's not the law in California. Well, I mean, can can a doctor force a parent to have his kid have their kid vaccinated i mean i i the state I, it, can and it well, has in well, california well the state can but they should go after the parents because if the parents refuse to let their kids get a shot you know what and can you we were not discuss this <laughs> well no but i mean it, it, nowhere to go with this we all know this <laughs> well you know i don't know that i would blame the doctor if the doctor were against vaccinations then i would go after the doctor but if the Stop. parents said, no, I don't want Not my kid problem, vaccinated. So you don't get to. Oh, eh, well, you know. Uh, but these parents have been terrible, some of them. I mean, it's just been, been horrible what's happened. And, uh, you know, the thing is, we've wiped out a lot of diseases through vaccinations and through... The thing that what we've wiped out and what's made the major difference is that we pretty well wiped out all the childhood diseases. I don't know if you remember, but I did when I was a kid. I may have mentioned this before. That every year, a couple of times, there would be, um, uh, oh, God, what's that word? Um, there yep. would be stickers on people's doors, and there's a word that they couldn't leave the Quarantine. house and nobody Quarantine. could go in. Quarantine. What? Quarantine. Yes. And that for smallpox, uh, I don't know about chickenpox, whooping cough, diphtheria, all those kid diseases, mumps and so on, That what used to happen, you know, there used to be... Uh, lots and lots and lots of kids died before age tw uh, age five, and it was because of those childhood diseases. Right. Now they don't, because you, we can take care of them, do, except for these few people, these few anti-vaxxer people. But it, it's truly a miracle compared to how many kids used well, to die of childhood diseases. It's really amazing. Also, we, we start to get diseases back again because <laughs> parents are so confident that it's not a problem anymore, that they well, just you don't know do what? it. I mean, would, if the younger people who are the ones having babies, of course, they don't remember these things like the quarantine stickers or up until the vaccine and when I was in high school, um, every year when we went back to school in the fall, one or two kids didn't return because, they, because of polio. Mm -hmm. And every single year, one or two in, my, in, in, in your class didn't come back. Right. And do you remember that for two Sundays, successive Sundays in a row, everybody in America, every person in America, went to their lo local school, lined up, got a sugar cube, and everybody was protected from polio. There's a, there's a story. Amazing thing. You remember Dave Garraway, who was a TV morning personality, first host of the Today Show. And he loved to tell the story about how he was going to a testimonial dinner for Dr. Jonas Salk. And he was getting all dressed up, and his son said to him, where are you going? He says, I'm going to a, a dinner. I'm going to honor a man named Dr. Jonas Salk. And they, he said, well, what did he do to get a testimonial? And Dave Garraway said to the kid, uh, he cured polio. And the kid looked up at him and said, what's polio? Mm-hmm. You know, now that is a testimonial. Uh, Salk was um, was great. Sabin, who invented the application on the sugar cube, is what really put it over the top. Because it's easy to do. No kid is going to scream. Kids and hated getting shots. They could take a sugar cube, <coughs> yummy, okay, 
And I remember I had the sugar cube. I remember it had a little blue dot on it. That's where they dropped the uh, the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he had to go back for a second one a couple of yeah. weeks later. And yeah. and literally in our lifetime, we wiped out a single disease. No, we wiped out many more. We were alive during the period that they found the vaccines for diphtheria, whooping cough, measles, uh, yeah. smallpox, you know, all of that. There's a whole list of them that somehow starting in the late 30s when penicillin, an antibiotic, was discovered, just one discovery after another came all through like the 10 or 15 years following World War II. Yeah. And so we pretty much wiped out every childhood disease. Yeah. You know, really yeah. awful one no one can figure out is cancer. Yeah, well, there, there's two, but that's the big, most widespread one. Cancer may not wind up being one disease. It may be many. As everybody has said, yes. Yeah. But here's the thing about polio that's kind of interesting. I read a book on polio, and it was fascinating. Do you know why polio came into, all of a sudden, it came into existence? It, it, it didn't really exist prior to a certain point, it, it, to any great extent. Do you know why it came into being? I don't know. You ready for this? cleanliness where before when we had a much filthier society you were kind of inoculated against this particular disease just I'd, well, I'd want to see the source on that no i have a book on i have a book on polio and they list that's that as, the source being in a book doesn't make the, it right that's the well i've heard on from several different people and several different sources that the main reason why polio caught on was because we had started to clean up the society. You can't say caught on. Don't. That's not. You know. Oh, all caught right. On. Yeah, it became a fad. Uh, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Don't. I just come on. You love the. Really, I'm, I'm so wound up by how bad news writing online is these days that I catch everything. It's yeah. just. It's so. It gets well, worse every morning. That's also because you're an old broad. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I'm just a cranky old lady, crabby yeah. old lady. Yeah, yeah. But the point is that 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 they said that it was the it was the uh, the way we had started cleaning up everything. I mean, we, there was no more I manure in the streets and whatever that caused this disease to start happening, and it happened in younger children because the older parents had already kind of been inoculated against it by the previously unclean society. You know. I've had enough of this disease talk, and it's time for us to go, right? No, it's not. we still got four more minutes. What other diseases haven't we talked about? I don't want to talk about How about, about Trump disease? I know more about disease than I care to day uh, in and day out. Let's talk about something How else. about the Trump disease that has gone on in this country? Mm, it's bad. I, I have, I've lost all optimism for the future of America completely it, it really I mean you don't think the damage it, he's done if we started fixing it tomorrow morning couldn't be done for deck couldn't be fixed in decades now it's that bad I I you know I have there a hard hundreds there are now a hundred and change of environmental regulations that have been wiped away wiped away aren't there anymore and the people could go in and dig for coal or whatever else in places that were preserved before. <clears throat> and I mean, that's just one example. Um, and every, it's just about every week if you read the back pages because the news media doesn't highlight it, is that there are more and more regulations that are good for the earth and good for people that have been wiped away, that don't exist, and corporations can do pretty much anything they want. Is he doing this out of stupidity? Is he doing this out of... Uh, I don't know. Everybody debates it. I don't you, really you know, care. I, I don't think... You know, I, don't, I don't perceive him as a purely political person. You know, no, he's not. He's a, that, it comes out that way because he's president. But what he is is selfish, mean, evil. I think, and, and, yeah. and, and that's not exaggerating. Uh, no, I, I don't think you're exaggerating at all. Uh, I, I was, I've been watching, uh, my wife has been, she hasn't been forcing me, she's been inflicting upon me, or making me watch, uh, The West Wing, which I had never seen The West Wing. What? It's they, one of, I would say, one of the top five television shows I ever. know, I know, I'm watching it now, so give me a break, all right? 
you know. But and, enjoy it. I just rewatched it for the first time since it was first aired, and it's just brilliant. It's stunningly and, and brilliant. And it, it, believe it or not, it holds up. It, it's not. It doesn't look yes, antiquated. Just saw it a couple months ago. Yeah. Um, but I watch it and I see this president at work, and I cannot imagine Trump being that way in the White House, being that well, president. He isn't. Huh? We know he isn't. Yeah, I mean, I think he's just a very lazy president who goes on whim and listens to Ivanka as to what he should do next. You know, I mean. Did you did you see what they did to Ivanka after the little video of her busting up a conversation among? Theresa May and Christine Lagarde and a couple of others um, at that meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and she just kind of inserted herself in and started yakking away. The I don't usually follow these things online, but I did. Some, it came into my email box from someone, and people started inserting her in every historical thing that ever happened. <laughs> so, they, so she was there with Roosevelt and Stalin at Yalta. Yeah. And they put her with Martin Luther King on I Have a Dream speech. And on and on and on and on. I mean, it, hundreds of them. They were so funny. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, you know, just quickly, uh, because we've actually, we've actually run out of time in about five oh, You could cut a whole lot of the stuff that we were talking no, about. No, 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 no. I found it fascinating. Anyway. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, but I, I did want to ask you quickly, what was your takeaway from the debates? I only watched the first 30 minutes of the first one, and uh, to me, I don't know what all this big deal is, that they were same old, same old. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, did you, every did... single line that came out of every mouth was rehearsed until it was just dead. Yeah. Yeah, it was all the same old, and if I'm elected president, I will make for a better America. But I, right. I, I, I. Exactly. But the second debate... I mean, that doesn't make some of them more interesting as a president than some of the others, but I don't think... And the other big mistake... I'm, you know, the Democrats are really good at making every bad mistake you can in yeah. political things, yeah. and they're already doing it again. And one of them is allowing... What is it now? 25 people to run for the nomination... Yeah. Uh, for president. Um, and also, by the way, hello, everybody. It is 17 months until we vote. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. In England, they announce a vote. They get to campaign for 25 days, and then they vote. I like that. No, oh, I like that, too. But you know who's not going to like it? Uh, people like MSNBC, CNN, Fox, they love this thing. They they were touting this the day after Trump got elected. They said, "Oh, Who's that goes back many, many, yeah. many, many votes." Yeah, um, it's been happening I, for look, a long uh, you know, time. I've said this, I've said this Obama before. Election. I'll say it again: the primaries are only a recent affectation of our political uh, process. All right, that we there was a time when we didn't have primaries. What we did is we held a convention. And then at that convention, they went in, and they fought amongst each other, and somebody came out victorious and said, here's our candidate. And then the other party would do the same thing, and then you would hold an election. That whole process started in about uh, uh, Nixon. August, it was Nixon August, Kennedy. August, August, September, somewhere around in there. And then you just had the, uh, the campaigning period after the last convention was over, and that was it. We should be doing it. Well, not going to happen. We've turned it into a reality show. But it's 24-7, and it starts, as you said, the first time I noticed it was the first Obama election, when I turned on the news the next morning after the results were in with my yeah. coffee, I don't remember who, but the first thing I heard was XX, I don't know the name of the person, has announced he's running for president in 2012. That was hmm. the first thing, the first morning after the election. What my and now it's not every, it the, happens every four the way years. The, the, the way these things, thing is someone the, announces they're running for president. The way these things look, when I see like Lester Holt and Rachel Maddow and uh, Jose Ballart <laughs> and those people sitting there at that table asking the questions, I'm wondering where's Simon Cowell? Hmm. You know, where's, I don't know who that the, is. He was the host of American Idol. Uh, you know, he's one of the judges on American Idol. 
It what looks, is, I don't know what that is. It, pretty, it was it was a, com, a, a talent competition show, you okay. know, like, as there are so many. And I'm just I, saying that's exactly what it looked like. You know, it was it was American Idol for politics, and uh, I just. <laughs> You know, I mean, I just, uh, uh, I just don't think we need it this early. Uh, and uh, why they're holding the debates, I have no idea. And by the way, when did we start running commercials in the middle of debates? You know, come on, come I on. Didn't know that we ever you did. know, NBC, you can take two hours out and not make money. Okay, it would be really yeah, nice. Well, it's the way it runs. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, do you have any any anybody you like uh, out of these people? Because I think Ka I, Kamala Harris has come come up really good. <coughs> she went after Biden. Well, uh, she's going to be in the same kind of trouble, different topic, but same kind of trouble as Joe Biden pretty soon, um, and that'll hit her. The one I like who won't who won't come anywhere near getting it is Mayor Pete. I like I, I like I like Mayor Pete. I like Elizabeth Warren, but you know. Uh, you see, I don't want Elizabeth Warren to lecture me for the next four years. Yeah, that's yeah, all yeah. she ever does is lecture Yeah, she's us. professorial. Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to be lectured. That's why I think Kamala Harris is uh, take charge. I really, I like her. I, you know, I really like her. I mean, if she were my only choice, I would vote for her. But, um, but I'm not impressed from, um, I'm not impressed from an overall how about Biden I'm really torn about Biden I'm really torn um, I don't think that we should ever vote for somebody because of their age young or old but on their qualifications and as and even the young ones can die in office that's why we have a Vice President, hello, mm -hmm. um, as Kennedy proved, you know, I mean, what, he was 45 or something? You know, yeah. Um, so I I know that people are being very, very, very careful about not saying he's too old for the job. On the other hand, when he's on a stage with people from age, what, 37 up to his age and everything in between, um, you see, I, I see in him my personal slowing down. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's and a good way. I of know. It. I, I can see it when he takes an extra breath before he starts an answer. I know being in that place where you want an extra second to think about what you're going to say than you wanted 10 years ago. Um, I don't know that that's a hindrance. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's good to have a second thought. Um, yeah. But... I know that I'm so I slow down for the day by two thirty, three o'clock. And so does he. You can see his just What do you mean? I got there. I got up two hours ago and I'm slowing down. Anyway. <laughs> uh, I'm not I'm very I'm pulled in two directions on that. I mean I've spent fifteen years writing about ageism you know, and, and yeah. um and I think that whoever's the most qualified person should be the person we select. Well, we, we, I'll tell you, let's get into this next time because it all comes down to what we're capable of doing at this age. In, the, in, that, in that venue, I mean, we can still do a lot of things at our age, but being president is not one of them, okay? But anyway, uh, let, uh, I, let's go. Uh, we, we run way over. Which means we so wasted all that time on our. Oh, stop. Disease. stop it! Disease is important. <laughs> if, if disease didn't exist, what the hell would I have to talk about? <laughs> Just, <laughs> oh God! What we've got diseases. By, by the way, Trump by the way, life. you right now are you're looking spectacular. You're looking yeah. great. You're looking terrific, and you're not <laughs> coughing as much. You're not coughing as much either. So. No, I'm not because I've got this new medicine and it's working. Yes, it's working. Ladies and gentlemen, she is at timegoesby.net. That's her blog. Read it. It's great. <laughs> So's Ronnie Bennett. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before.
I don't know what was happening with the sound. Oh, now I've got a problem with my, uh, my fading. Oh, well. Oh, boy, I give up. You know, one thing or another. I see, I can't, I uh, can't, I uh, can't, uh, well, there I did it, but then I had to, uh, I had to do it again. Okay, well, ah, uh, fuck it. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. I just, uh, uh, you know, I, I have no idea why this thing all of a sudden at certain times decides, oh, God damn it, no. I'm having troubles here, folks. You know, these are the nights I just feel like uh, saying to hell with it. No, that's not what I want. This is what I want. I want to make this... Get, okay, all righty. Um, I gotta, I'm, I'm just doing things here, folks. Please excuse me. You know, I, I run this whole thing, and uh, it's, it's having a problem tonight. You know where I can't uh, I can't seem to go from thing to thing. So anyway, uh, let me see here. Let me turn my uh, my thing on. And um, for some reason, there are days when uh, my I have a a thing where I uh, I can just push like a, a button here, and I can go back and forth between pictures. But uh, that doesn't seem to be working at all. So anyway. Well, we'll see. Oh, somebody's calling. Here comes Scott Boddicker, ladies and gentlemen. Hello to Scott Boddicker. Let me see here. Let me uh, immediately put him uh, in, a, uh, in a, a thing here. There's Scott. There's Scott. Uh, let me see here. Okay, Scott. And um, then I have to fade over to him. All right. That's oh no no wait a minute I just faded. Come on. Come on. There we go. There we go. All right. Okay. I hope I hope we're okay. Boy, everything's fucking up on me tonight. What? Everything's fucking up on me tonight. The sound yeah, was it's kind of freaking up, freaking up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, my sound was fucking up. Uh, uh, here comes. Um, let me see here. Here comes. Hey. Uh, I got to. I've got. I've got to put uh, Phil in somewhere here. Uh, let's see, scuba diver. There we go. All right. Okay. There he is. Hello, Phil. How are you? Hey, I'm fine tonight. Uh, yeah. I wasn't feeling so good the other night, and yeah. uh, I probably uh, needed to say, you know, I I don't feel good. And I should get off instead of just not participating. So uh, my apologies for that. And uh, I feel better tonight. But uh, I, I, I've been having what you have all week. What's and, that? What uh, was that? Uh, exploding poops. <laughs> oh, really? No, I didn't have that. That was not my problem. No, no, you've had it for a while. Oh, uh, that, that, that's uh, my, uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yes. the IBS. IBS. Uh, I, I don't know what I ate, what what pill I'm taking. Uh, that now all of a sudden for the la last week, and then I'm sitting in in my thing, and in this apartment, mm -hmm. uh, the only air conditioner is in the living room, so I have a uh, what do they call those things? A swamp cooler, mm -hmm. and uh, it actually made the room more muggy and and uncomfortable uh, than if I didn't use it. Uh, right. So. You know, when you said, hey, if you're not going to participate, you know, don't call in. It's okay. Because <laughs> you know? uh, I wasn't participating. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I never participated. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's your shtick. I mean, uh, <laughs> that's why we love you. Because yeah. <laughs> he quit. He's in the corner. And shut up. Well, I took a I took a, a, a Xanax again last night and I really shouldn't because it throws me off. It throws me off on everything. But we even had sound problems there at the end with Ronnie, so I don't know. I give up. You know. I don't know. Nice interview. Oh yeah, nice interview. Yeah. Uh, here comes uh, here comes Tony. Let me uh, put Tony on. Uh, uh, well, hold on a second. I gotta. Uh, yeah. Now we got his pictures, so now he. I don't know. I still don't have his. His name still doesn't come up. Here we go. Come on. 
Uh, there we go, Tony. Uh, there we go. Boom. Come on, Tony. Come on. Oh, I'm, I'm logged in. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just, I just, tried to, I just put his name up there. I uh, see. Hey, everything's going wrong tonight. No, I, I, you know, sometimes I do that and it doesn't grab. Okay, there we should go now. There we go. Mm-hmm. See how easy that was? Okay, thank God we're only doing two nights this week. You know. yeah, well, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. It's it's a photo contest uh, Wednesday. Oh, you mean it's go beat up on the old people Wednesday? Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to beat them until they can't raise their hands to, to vote on the, uh, on the photos. On the photos. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. You know. I might not be here either, Alec. I'm going to, going to go to a patriotic concert with SG. Oh, oh really? Uh, are yeah. you going to get a pair of those Nike shoes with the uh, Betsy Ross flag on the back? Yeah. Yeah, I want a pair. And I don't even like Nike type shoes. <laughs> They're going for $2,000. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. On the black market because they pulled them off the shelves. Oh. Except yeah, for all I, the ones I don't know. Kids I don't. Who there I don't know why, though. Kaepernick says he. Uh, it's uh, uh, the flag supports slavery. Well, while I agree with Kaepernick on a lot of things, I think he's it's full of us. shit on that one. Yeah, that well, just happened to be that just happened to be unfortunately the first flag that we ever had. It's yeah. the Betsy Ross flag. Yeah, 13 yeah. stars in a circle, I think, representing the uh, 13 colonies. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know... Um, 13's unlucky. No, actually, it's a, it's, a, it's a lucky number for me. You know... Uh, there, there is something about 13 that's lucky. Uh, I don't remember what it is. So it, oh, it has to do with the dollar bill. And uh, that uh, things are in 13 and, and, and in a mas uh, not Masonic, but, yeah, uh, the Masons have something about the number 13 but i can't put two and two together remember what they were hmm. uh is like oh yeah if you look on the back of the bill uh dollar bill the uh eagle is holding 13 uh arrows and uh uh some flower or something with 13 something on it 13 leaves and 13 berries uh and there's there's a whole bunch of stuff about the number 13 and i guess yeah. it has to do but uh, I, I uh, getting back to this Kaepernick thing. I mean, when I heard it, I went, you know, you're being a little, a little too particular about this. You know, that is that is a historical flag. It, you know, it, nobody ever said it represented slavery. There isn't somebody being whipped on it or anything like that. You know, um, yeah. uh, yes, I realize that was the flag that was around when slavery was around. But, uh, you know, I mean, the, what makes our flag now any more um, uh, egregious that way? I guess he wouldn't stand for that one either. But, well, uh, you well, know, well, uh, well, with, no, with Kaepernick. I, I, you know, I believe the right to stand for the flag is up to each individual and their own personal morality. Um, just like uh, I found it egregious when they added God to the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, yeah. you know, and because up until when I grew up, when I was in school, there was no God in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, it was simply when a, did they when did they uh, start the Pledge of Allegiance? I think it was a, well, they started the Pledge of Allegiance years earlier, but in, the in schools, the, yeah. yeah, but the, the Pledge of Allegiance was. Um, um, I'm t turning my air conditioning down a little bit yeah. here. And yeah. a little more. Keep bragging about the air. It, well, <laughs> yeah. I don't have any. It's driving me crazy, too. Anyway, uh, when I w first was in school, we did the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance, go I can't remember. It goes back probably forever. All right. I mean, I did it in first grade, I remember. Yeah, that but, was my first but, radio but, gig. But when I had it, when I had, uh, when we, I said the Pledge of Allegiance in, in grades, in high school, uh, grade school, when I was in like kindergarten and first grade and second grade and third grade, I, I noticed that uh, Scott's looking it up. Um, it didn't have under God in it. Under God was added in the 50s because of the communist scare. 
Oh. And that's why they added it. And it was they uh, were I, godless. It was uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic yes. for which it stand, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And there was no under God in there. And when they started going under God, I went, "Is something wrong with that?" You know, and I was a kid. And you know, when I was, was in sixth grade or fifth grade, I was the guy that said the Pledge of Allegiance in the morning over the PA system for the whole school. Mm -hmm. I, my, fir see. my first radio gig, yeah. at, also unpaid. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But yeah. I, I don't remember doing the under God, but, you know, it's been so long ago, I, I can't remember, you know, uh, other than doing it, remembering the pledge. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I just find it uh, a little egregious. That was in the 60s. You know, but, I, but anyway, so, you know, I'm sensitive to these things, and I just don't think that, you know, I mean, I don't like the idea of the flag being on the shoes, okay? Period. Uh, I think that what? should be put into question if anything's going to be put into question. I don't want to buy a pair of Nikes with the American flag on it. I'm sorry. People it's, who buy those don't wear them. It's so jingoistic, you know. Uh, I, I, you to save it? I did a job in a guy's house that mm -hmm. had a special cabinet built the for sneakers? his hundreds of pairs of sneakers, mm -hmm. and they were all the same size. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was it, it went. They spent ten thousand bucks on a cabinet to store all of these sneakers uh, behind glass. Uh, it looked like a shoe store. Except they were all, uh, you know, uh, different colors and uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, people get into these sneakers like art. So having a pair of sneakers with the flag celebrating July Fourth, I don't. They're not meant to be worn. I think they people use them as art. I'm sorry. I wear my fucking shoes. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I don't I, I don't uh, and I I don't I don't think those were particularly artful. You know, but of course they're worth a fortune now if you've got a pair of them. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, Two G's they're going for grand. on the black market. Uh, you hold on to them, they'll go for more. No, nah, I think they'll lose their value no, no, like a won't. lead no, balloon. No, they won't because they're rare. But every, you know, of course, things only have value depending upon how many people want them. You know. you know, you know what holds the most value, for instance, with cars, uh, mm -hmm. if you look at a car that was extremely popular, let's say in the 50s, mm -hmm. like the 57 Chevy. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, here it is, 2019. It, they were very, very popular. So they have very high value now. Uh, you take a car that didn't have high, uh, it wasn't that popular in the 50s and it doesn't have anywhere near the value that it does today. So uh, what I've found is things that are the most value valuable were popular at the time, but there aren't a lot of them available today. I, I don't so understand it, what you're saying. Well, what that I'm makes saying no is, sense is that, at all. That, that just because something's rare doesn't make it valuable. Uh, it, uh, uh, it, it no, doesn't well, hurt. Uh, no, wait a minute. If it's not rare and it's common, then it's readily available. Well, if it's if it was, if it was a popular, at a, at at one point. If it was popular and all of them have rusted into hulks, and right. there are only a few of them left, then it becomes worth something. That's yeah. right. Well, That's I mean, right. I don't get what you're trying to say, Phil. Well, you you were saying it, quite the opposite. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm, I was saying that rare. things that things like. More. Uh, sneakers, for instance, if everybody loved them and mm -hmm. now they're no longer available, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's they they have more value now than they would have had after time, and and they become rare, but originally they were popular. So mm -hmm. if you had something that was not popular originally, no matter how rare they are, they still don't bring much value. Yeah, yeah. Well, Does that make sense? Joined us. Yeah. Patrick has joined us. No, yeah. that doesn't make sense, Phil. If, if you had a car, let's say, here's a good example, um, Studebaker. Right. Okay. Uh, Not very valuable uh, today. Um, well, I don't know if there are a lot of them around. I think there are certain there ones. If you, if you got a, uh, uh, I think there was a Studebaker Avanti, I think was one of the cars yeah. that they made. I think if you have an Avanti, it's worth something. It's worth something, but it isn't worth, uh, let, let's say, uh, a 57 Chevy convertible is worth a lot more than a Studebaker Avanti. 
And I don't you know, know if that's true. Yeah, it is. Scott well, can look I, it up. It, <laughs> Scott, you, you know? were you were looking something up there. You were looking up the Pl Pledge of Allegiance, right? Yes, I was. And, and what did you find out? Well, it was uh, originally written in 1892 by some guy, Bellamy, mm -hmm. Arthur Bellamy, maybe. Mm -hmm. and, when? Uh, when? But it was, it was only, what? Well, 1898, when was it? 88, I think. 18, 18, 1892. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was written, mm -hmm. and it was officially recognized by Congress in 1992. Uh, in so 19... I don't know when, it didn't say when they started saying it in schools and whatnot. Yeah, but did they what? say when they added in under God? Uh, they did, but I didn't. I it, thought that it, was it was like it was like fifty one or fifty two. It it was as a result of the communist uh, witch hunt and mm. scare. Yeah. So. Yeah. All uh, they have to do is come to uh, Gabnet uh, and they'll uh, find uh, all the uh, comics. Nineteen fifty three. Nineteen fifty three. It was Francis Francis Bellamy. I miss miss. Yeah, and when, when did you say, because uh, we missed it, uh, when, when, when was it uh, officially uh, made into a, the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, the official allegiance? Well, well, Congress, Congress recognized it in 1942. 42, okay. See, uh, again, that may have been as a result of the war. Yeah. Sure. You know, uh, I don't like the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'll tell you why. How dare you ask me to pledge allegiance to my country? That should be a given, you know, did, and, and did simply you swear say and, and say a bunch of to say a bunch of words uh, to pledge my allegiance is kind of a false note because if I was let's say a communist, I'd pledge allegiance. Why not? Just to make the rest of you think I wasn't a communist. You know, when I got sworn in as a cop, they uh, you take an oath. Uh, you know, uh, you'll uphold the Constitution and, and the laws, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, as, you know, as they pertain. And uh, I took it seriously. And I think a lot of people uh, take the pledge seriously. When you uh, got into the Navy, uh, didn't you uh, take a pledge? And I, do, I really don't remember, to be honest yeah. with you. I don't yeah. think so. You did swear, swear an oath to the Constitution. Uh, yeah, probably. Probably. Yes. I think that, the Constitution. That's, that's required. But it wasn't a pledge of allegiance. You know, allegiance right. is saying, do you allege, you know, are you, are you, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, do you love your country, basically? And, and I don't think that's a question anybody has the right to ask or to force me to attest to. You know, uh, why should they? It should be assumed. Uh, yeah, I got silence. You know, out of you know it's funny. You I got silence that. out of Phil. Well, uh, no, because I was thinking about it, and I was saying, can you love your country and not pledge allegiance? Yes, absolutely. You know, it, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and so I, yeah, I was agreeing with you. I'm <laughs> saying that it's jingoistic. It's a, yeah. it's a, you know, oh, you won't say the pledge of allegiance. You must be a communist. Well, no, that's I'm true. not. You must you be. Know. <laughs> you, you know, no, I'm not. Uh, yeah. Democratic socialist, same thing. No, I'm not even a democratic socialist. You know, I'm, I, 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 actually, when people used to say, "What are you, a commie or something?" I'd go, "Yeah, I am." <laughs> so, what are you going to no, what are okay. you going to do about it now? It. You know, it's, well, it's no, because well, it's the same thing I used to do when people go, "What are you, queer or something?" I say, "Yes, I happen to be a homosexual," <laughs> just to make them feel fucking uncomfortable. Yeah. Because they were trying to make me feel uncomfortable by thinking they were saying something they shouldn't have said. I thought it was because you were trying to uh, get beat up as a kid. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have to work hard at that. <laughs> yeah. Just being a Jew, right? Yeah, yeah just being a Jew in an all-Italian neighborhood kind of helped. <laughs> you know. Or in Marin. There wasn't that many Jews in Marin when you were growing uh, We up. had a Marin Jewish community center, and yeah. it was in a house in San Rafael. Yeah. that they had bought. And uh, I think maybe there were like 100 families, maybe, yeah. Jewish families in, the, in, in all of Marin. Yeah. You know. Uh, you know what's, I think the population of Marin right now is 200,000. 
uh, I don't know what it was when you were living there. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of Jews there now. They have a big Jewish community center. When I, uh, I was asked to go to the Jewish community center to interview George Carlin a few years back, a few years, quite a few yeah. years back, and um, I uh, 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 came, d- drove up to it, and I went, oh, fuck, this is the Jewish community center? You know, yeah, it's beautiful. It, it was, yeah, it's beautiful. It was users out near the um, the it's next uh, to the Frank Lloyd Wright. Yeah, uh, yeah, right next to the uh, yeah. Gattaca. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a beautiful building too, actually. It, yeah, oh, that, Frank, that was done yeah. by Frank Lloyd Wright. That was I remember when it was built. Actually, it, it's the city. It's the uh, uh, county. Ca- uh, the county uh, offices. Offices and the courts and things like that yeah. are in there. And uh, when. Frank Lloyd Wright was commissioned to do it, and he came up with the plans, and they built it. Everybody hated it. I didn't. I thought it was terrific. I thought it was really amazing what they did with the place. It was just incredible. You uh, know, it looked like the Jetsons. It, it, you know. it, well, I mean, it, Frank Lloyd Wright's works were timeless. Right. You know, they had no t- date time stamp on them. They, You and, go out and look at it today, and it looks... As modern Beautiful. as anything else that's around it, because yeah. it's it its styling is I don't know how to describe it. He, to begin with, he never believed in landscaping. He would build. It was always the, part of the. He would build, build to the land, yeah. And this thing is like two kind of like, I guess long tubes that go out and stretch across two hills, and it's yeah. just it's amazing, and yet. And if anybody wants to see what the uh, Marin County uh, um, Center looks like, uh, there's Civic a, Center. There's Civic, Civic Center. Civic Center. It, there's a movie called Gattaca, and it is the Gattaca Corporation. They use that. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and, um, uh, I, but I remember when they first built it. And then, and I've never been able to find the house since. But when I was a kid, uh, I noticed that somebody was building a house over on a hill across from our house. And so I took my car and I drove up there and I went up there and it was very unusual. It was a very unusual home. And this guy was building it himself. And I said, so I got out of the car and I talked to him. I said, hey, this is really nice, but you're building it yourself, right? He says, yeah. He said, a guy I worked for built the plans for it. I said, who? He said, Frank Lloyd Wright. He wow. said, I was working with him on the Marin County Civic Center. He said, and he just drew me these quick plans for a house. Wow. And, uh, Very cool. and that house is there somewhere, but I haven't been able to find it since. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then well, there, maybe somebody from Marin will call tonight. The other tell Frank, us where in case people don't know what we're talking about, Frank Lloyd Wright was maybe one of the I'd say greatest architects of our time. Uh, yeah. a, a lot of yeah. stuff they use today in office buildings are concepts of Frank Lloyd Wright, like the endless window. If you ever go in a place and there's a window, but you can't see the top of it because there's a lip coming down. Well, I mean, the effect is this window goes forever, but it doesn't. It just goes up a couple of, about a foot. That was one of his concepts. But anyway, um, he, um, um, uh, when I lived in uh, Chicago, I moved to a place called Oak Park, and it was right next to Oak, uh, what was this town right next to it? But on the town right next to it, there was an entire street in which every home was built by Frank Lloyd Wright. Wow. Because he moved in there, built a house, he had friends and neighbors, so he gave them plans and made plans for their homes. And the whole street is like nothing but Frank Lloyd Wright homes. It's like a Frank Lloyd Wright uh, um, uh, housing tract. Now that's valuable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> valuable. Yeah, that's valuable. They're, they're priceless. You know, um, I used to have a book with all his designs in it, and there was that one that he built in Pennsylvania that was like the falls. Yeah, it was, right. Uh, right. Uh, I, I forget the again. Total he n- didn't. He didn't do anything to the, to the uh, the, the, the area the, around the area it, around right, it. The he literally around. built the house over the fall. Well, yeah. and uh, the falls were part of the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah. He was just amazing. And, and they they yeah, ha- they hated the Marin County Civic Center. In fact, right. they they built onto it 
uh, some other sheds or things like that to the side that don't, don't really fit in. Now, this, the Jewish Community Center is like right next to it almost. It's down the road. Just down the road a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember the design of that. Did it have any, I, I any don't similarity? Remember, I don't remember it that much. All I remember is it wasn't like that little house that I got bar mitzvahed in. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and uh, so there was a lot of work, you know, that that uh, that went into it. I thought it was terrific. Yeah. How are you doing, Patrick? I'm doing terrific. Really? Yes. You always are doing terrific. You're never doing shitty. That's because he's an up kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what uh, you enjoy? Uh, Tanforan Mall. Uh, Alex, you're familiar with that. It's yeah. in San Bruno. Yeah. Well, right now, there's an active shooter there. Uh, two people, I think, are dead, and two, two others are wounded. That's what they get for going to the Tanforan Mall. Right, but the, they got sales on now. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> and there's not too much in the way of crowds. Really? Wait, 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 is this just news that's come over the uh, the wire? It's been going on for a few hours. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that'll be that'll dominate the news in San Francisco. We didn't get yeah. anything about it here. You really? Know? No. Wow. No. Um, uh, all we all we got news about is that uh, Lee Iacocca died. Died uh, ninety four. Ninety-four. I thought he was nine. Maybe he's a little older than that. Uh, hold, uh, hold on a second. Let me. Let me. I, let me I had it. Let me look at my watch here. Uh, Leo uh, Coca. Ninety-four. Yeah, hold on a second. Let me. It doesn't say here. Uh, I'm, it's on Drudge. Uh, yeah. uh, nine, uh, column three, uh, middle middle of column. Uh, yeah, there was a thing today where the uh, vice president was supposed to go to New Hampshire or someplace like that, and then he was called back. But I yeah. never got the story of why he was called back. What are two two different stories going on? Yeah. One one says he never left. Yeah. And yeah. One says he did get in the limo and was on his way to the airport. So they're conflicting it, it, stories. It, it, but is the there, is there the reason why they told him not to go? Yeah. It, they his uh, press secretary. She said they would nothing health related to the president or the vice president and there was nothing security related to the president or the vice president and to that i say bullshit hmm. gee maybe it's that uh, cardiac arrest that trump has been working so hard for <laughs> yeah. and uh they were saying that kim jong-un is the one that's having uh, issues uh, that he's wheezing when he speaks, and that it's uh, uh, that it's uh, they yeah, think but, his but, obesity oh, is, well, yeah, uh, but, is. As I watched him over the weekend, he looks thinner than Trump. Well, I, yeah, but Trump is a lot bigger than him. Uh, you don't think he's thinner, uh, Scott? I I think they're tied in the fat all. His neck is really wide, too. And so they had a doctor on that was talking about that uh, they think that Kim Jong-un has some, uh, some uh, what, issues. What, what network was that? I don't remember. It was probably Fox. Whenever you can't remember, it's always Fox. <laughs> you know I, mean? well, I don't not remember on purpose. I don't, it it could have it been NBC, and I wouldn't remember. You know, uh, it's, you know, I don't write it, sh this stuff down. But really? uh, oh, okay. uh, let's see. Was there anything else happening today? We got the shoes. Uh, I'm trying to think. We got the active shooter. Yeah. Uh, um, well, it's your active shooter. We don't have an active shooter here. Well, no. it, it's so your hometown. You big deal. I'll tell hometown. you quickly what I did do. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why I'm so tired tonight, but it could be from the, uh, the uh, Xanax. I had decided to go back to a doctor. Yeah. Because I wasn't, this thing was still going on, you know? And I went back to the city MD again, but I went to a different location. Uh, and uh, I saw the doctor, and I told him I'd been to another one of the doctors, and he was worried about the heart, but the heart wasn't anything to do with it. And I went to my doctor, and he felt it was maybe allergies, and he checked my heart, and I was fine. And the guy did something neither my doctor or this other doctor did took a flashlight and looked down my throat. He said, you have the most swollen uvula I've seen in a while. 
He said it's mm. probably some kind of irritation from the pollen and from, you know, whatever. Uh, here's the prednisone, f five tablets for five days. Take it, and you're going to feel a hell of a lot better. And the next day, I was going, I feel like 75% better. And today, I felt, a at one point, 100% better. Now I'm sliding back to 75, but, you know. But supposedly, I, the prednisone, so you're going, yes, right, uh, Patrick? And you, you know about prednisone? Really? That's amazing. Didn't Jerry it? Lewis swell up to like 300 pounds yeah, on but prednisone? Yeah, but he was on yeah. it for years, okay? Yeah. And there is a weight gain component to it. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I'm up to 195 today, and I think maybe part of it might be. Uh, the it cause you to hold water or something? It could cause you to hold water, do a lot of things like that. But I, I, you only need about five days of this stuff, and it, I, they, they cleared it up before. Do you have something cleared up with it, Patrick? Because you seem to know the drug. No, my, my mom did. Uh, she's had various things similar to what you've been talking about over the years with it's been either allergies or pollen and things like that. Mm -hmm. She's been on prednisone a, a couple of times, and it's been like an overnight change for her where... Just like you said, the next day you're feeling 75 percent better. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, that's what I figured he would have put you on is, is prednisone. I was having a little breathing problems today, and and uh, again, but it 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 seems to be working. You know, when I had my hair transplants, they gave me prednisone, really? and uh, and they gave me a lot of it. And uh, I reacted to it. I said, I don't feel good on Why this stuff. Why would they give you prednisone well, for your hair, your, your hair uh, plugs? Uh, because they were going to, you know, poke holes in my head. And no, for no, some no, that, that they'd give you an antibiotic for that. No, no, it wasn't an antibiotic. It was, well, I was I'm pretty sure it was prednisone. What are and, they? And prednisone, it, make me, prednisone is for inflammation. Right. And uh, I guess it made it easier for them to stick the plugs in. I think they gave you something else. I think you're you're wrong about that. What, yeah. what, what are you saying, Scott? What are you nodding your head for, Scott? I, I, I have no idea what they're using. Yeah, you used it for your uvula, and he's using it for hair plugs. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Patrick's yeah, yes, using Patrick. it to get taller. Patrick, <laughs> it's not working either. <laughs> it's well, a reaction. Remember, a lot of these drugs. A lot of drugs, they yeah. can be for different things. Um, for instance, I'm on a drug, clonazepam, which is an antidepressant, but I, I have the prescription because it also works with spasticity. I, because I have spasm at night when I sleep mm -hmm. with legs, so it works for that, which you would never guess that an antidepressant mm -hmm. for one person would work as an antispasm medication for me, and that's that's what it does. So, um, yeah, it, who knows? Maybe they did give him prednisone. I wouldn't have guessed that, but for uh, I'm pretty sure it was. Well, it could be. I'm just amazed with some of the medication. All of the shit. If you read what it's used for. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even look like it's related to one another, and yeah, doctors, yeah. I mean, doctors must know what they're doing. Mine did. I mean, I I don't I don't have depression, but my legs don't move around at night, so it worked for that. Yeah, but the, the you know, prednisone. I looked it up. It's used for inflammation. It's also used, believe it or not, prostate cancer. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, in fact, I have to go get my test on blood test on Monday, and I'm thinking actually it might lower my uh, my PSA. PSA. Can. Yeah. So we'll see. You know, but I, it, it, I'll be through with it too. on uh, on Thursday. Be my last dose. So who knows? Yeah. You know. But I mean, it, 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 so it it. Well, it, if you whack like, off, it'll get higher. It was amazing how I felt the next day. I just felt uh -huh. you know really ter really terrific. I felt a little less well this evening, but this during the day today, I mentioned to Marjorie when she came home. I said I feel like a hundred percent, you know, over. I mean, I was feeling shitty for three weeks. Yeah. You know. How is her knee? Oh yeah, she did. Who gives a shit? It's all about me. We give it. We, we give a <laughs> it's shit. It's all about me. 
<laughs> no, her knee is um, still hurts, you know, uh, but it's get, gets it's getting better. I hear less complaints about the knee. Sometimes when it's going to rain or something like that, oh, my knee is killing me today, you know. Uh, it's going to be a year, if that, before she is 100%. You want to you wanna know something? I read an article, uh, which I sent to my employees because they do this, and it, and it gets me really pissed off, uh, uh, at a casino. What, they take days oh, off? No, no. <laughs> uh, sometimes that's a blessing. Uh, they, uh, at a casino called Jack's Casino, uh, a sign that said wet floor fell down, and it, was, and it was on the ground flat. And the employees saw it, and didn't do anything about it. A woman walks into the casino, trips over the sign, and breaks her kneecap. Oh my God. A jury just awarded her three million dollars. Wow. Three million dollars for falling over a sign that said "wet floor." Well, you know, Marjorie is accident prone, uh, and uh, she's had a couple suits in her time. But I think we got to find her something like that. That'll take care of. Her yeah, you know, while. bring her over to Jack's. We already know what it's worth. <laughs> yeah. Jack's Casino. Uh, yeah. But it, it was in Nevada. Do I feel I sorry for where. the casino owner? I don't know if I do or I don't. Uh, you know, I, 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 I've had a problem with my employees putting samples in front of the front door on the floor for people to see. And I said, you know, I say, you can't do that. And you certainly can't walk away from it. And finally, I wrote one of them up uh, last week and said, if you do it again, I'm firing you. Oh and, can they collect unemployment? And then, then I saw that uh, article about the casino, and I forwarded it to all the salespeople. How many people do you have working for you, Phil? Uh, five. You send emails? You... Oh, so you send them emails? I forwarded the article. Oh. Yeah. You, you ready to can somebody? So oh, I, I was, say... I was, you know, really? really young. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, uh, because I once was sued for, and I got ten grand. Somebody, <gasps> somebody with a beach zori on mm -hmm. she's walking into the store and the beach zori you know how the front of it uh, went underneath her toe uh, on the welcome mat in the front of the store <laughs> the insurance company paid her ten thousand dollars really and, yeah was she hurt or just she claimed she was but she didn't she, even fall down. Fake she didn't fall down she, no? she just stumbled and uh you know i, I saw it I saw it happen. Jeez. $10,000. Why doesn't anything ever ha like that ever happen to me? Yeah. My, you know. When I left. Marjorie never even got their name. Never got their name. No. No. We had, we had an uncle in my family. He never, my mother never invited him to the house. Uncle Jawan. All he did was sue people. Alex, he never worked this guy. I got to tell you, with Marjorie. With <laughs> he Mar fell in front yeah. of the house. They walked him to the street and laid him in a pothole. He sued the city. This how fucking, my grandmother wanted to kill this guy. Every time we had him over Christmas, she never. She was scared he was always going to fall in the house and so she Tony, uh, uh, <laughs> Alex was going to say something. Well, well Sorry, I was going to say in the case of Marjorie's situation, yeah. you know, sometimes when you have something like what happened to Marjorie, you immediately don't think anything's broken. Right. You know, your adrenaline is pumping. Well, to begin with, your endorphins kick in and your yeah. the pain level. I mean, I remember once uh, I was uh, going to. Um, uh, a, a woman's house, and I got into the street, walked out in, into the street to hail a cab. And as I walked out in the street, those were the days when these streets were in terrible shape, and there was a giant piece of rock, and I pivoted on it and fell into the into the into the into the street, uh, injuring my knee. But I got in the cab, and I went to this woman's house, and she lived up three flights of stairs, and I get up the first flight, and I'm fine. Second flight, my leg's starting to hurt. By the third flight, I'm really in pain. And what happened is, initially, your endorphins kick in, and it works like morphine. You don't, you know, you don't feel, feel it. it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you realize, oh, man, I really fucked myself up. And that's what Marjorie, I think, started. I mean, she knew there was something wrong, but she didn't know the extent of it until she got to her office, and then it was too late to go find these tourists. Well, somebody collected $3 million on the same kind of inju inju injury. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, probably. Yeah, well, what you have to prove is that the injury 
deco incapacitated you in a way where it impacted your income or it did something. You can't just say. Uh, there's yeah. no pain and suffering for a broken kneecap. Well, I mean, there's there's the actual suit, and then there's also um, damages for negligence or whatever. Yeah. You know. Well, I wonder what the mafia guys would pay when they break some guy's decaps. <laughs> That's for you, Judge. No, they got, no. <laughs> excuse me, Phil. You got it wrong. <laughs> they got paid for breaking to somebody's do the kneecaps. <laughs> I got a new job. I break your kneecaps. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, you broke my kneecaps. I'm going to sue you, Mario. You know. Uh, <laughs> Let's get the rug guy. I, I, I gave Tony a hard time for piling on the other night. Yeah. yeah I, I what did I tell you you had to do on the air? Cut my thumb off. Your pinky. I need, needed to cook my pink. Yeah. I needed to cook though. Tomorrow's pot, tomorrow's chicken. Let me let me let me throw something. He had to make out amends. Here. I told me how to cut his pinky off on the show. Because this is uh, <laughs> this is big in the news. Um, and it's, uh, I think, an important thing to bring up is our president, it's the 4th of July in Washington, D.C. And what do we do at the 4th of July? They have a nice little concert on the mall. They have a little parade, you know. Everybody, tanks, fireworks, no, no, and no, no, fly no, over. No, no, no tanks, no flyovers. Uh, and um, no our, tanks our president decided he wants... He wants the tanks, you know, and I want. I'm not going to say you're welcome, but anyway, he wants tanks, and um, they can't. It turns out they can't put them on the streets of Washington D.C. because it will tear the shit up out of the streets. Not true. You can put rubber things around the tracks uh, that allow you to operate. Why do on we the want street? our implements of war marching down the street on a Fourth of July parade? Well, what I, I is it, what like is the it. logic here, Phil? Well, well the soldiers can country. take a break by resting on the tank as they yeah, yeah, drive. It, all I'm and saying Kim is Kim Jong Un does it. Kim Jong Un well, shows of his course, tanks on the and so do Kim so do the Chinese, and yeah, so do the Russians. Right. Who are these countries anyway, Phil? Competition for ratings, at least. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he would, the reason he wants it is because he was impressed by it when he saw it in France. Oh, Scott has his. Yeah, yes, he's got. Hey, Eva. Alex. Yeah. What kind of tanks is he going to have on display? Uh, I don't know, but I think bringing in all those tanks on trains, I mean, how much is it costing us? He, he wants really, to have brand new Sherman tanks on his in his parade. Are Sherman still used, or are they from like World War One? That's what he asked for: brand Jesus. new Sherman tanks. I thought they were from World War One, aren't they? World War Two. They Two? couldn't use them in '57. Oh, really? The guys, so, the guys, an a, idiot. You get a deal on used ones. He's an idiot. Everything He's gonna have brand new Sherman tanks, all cocked and loaded. Which, incidentally, by the way, in case you are not familiar, is the name of a porno video, cocked and loaded. So. Uh, it's better than locked and loaded. Yeah. Uh, but he yeah, used the term cocked and loaded. What? Yeah. He's a moron. Trump. Well, I mean, it, it, he and he's going to give a speech at the, at, at the uh, uh, where was it, the Lincoln Memorial? No. Is that where he's going to do did you hear his speech? It's only going to be for Republicans. He's canning out t tickets for only card-carrying fucking Republicans. Well, they don't uh, have How much it. you got to donate to go? It, it, it's going to be someplace like the, is it the Lincoln Memorial or uh, it's someplace like that? It's it's one of those yeah, memorials. It's, it's, it's on the mall somewhere. It's on the mall somewhere. How dare he say you can't come unless you're a Republican? <laughs> that, exactly. yeah, you know, I thought everybody was allowed to news. use the mall. It's like saying only come if you're white. <laughs> come well, on. if he, got, yeah, if exactly he went to the... White. Republican. You're right, Tony. And you know what he's going to do? You know what he's going to do? He takes these opportunities. Hold on a second, Phil. He takes mm -hmm. these opportunities to bash Democrats, to literally in the speech bash Democrats. He went to the Boy Scouts, okay? He went to the Boy Scout Jamboree, and what did he do? He bashed the Democrats in what was a non-political venue. And they're little kids. <laughs> 
Huh? Well, and they're little kids little kid, on top of it. I used to build steak houses. He's gonna have this fucking idiot come over here. Yeah, hey, he's, he's crazy. The yeah. man's nuts. Yeah. Hey, he won't be at the Tanforan Mall. He's just nuts. He's That's for damn sure. sure. Look, he's we've been joined by Bree and Dubai. They were the, yeah. Do they have tan parades with tanks in Dubai, Bree? No, no. Okay, he's got his mouth full. That's why he's nodding. His oh, we get to see when the is, curtains tonight. We day. get to see the curtains at Tony's place. Yeah. Uh, nice. The, 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 well, yeah. When's, when's uh, moving day, Bree? Well, the movers will come on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, and then we, uh, we officially fly out on Monday. Really, you're leaving that fast. How uh, weren't you? Don't you have some kind of obligation to your current job to stay there until you complete it or whatever? Oh, I did all that stuff. Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> but, but what's been crazy? I tell you, there's so much stress. But the big thing is, what happens here is when you when you come to the end of like when you tell them, hey, I'm gonna go. In the last month, they accumulate all the funds that they owe you. They call it end of service agreement. Mm -hmm. And they hold that until you complete all your obligations. So I completed all my obligations very quickly, but I still live in their housing. So they wanted me to leave the housing before you know this would happen. Well, I stayed an extra week to make sure I did everything and got everything done. So essentially, I, I was being penalized for staying and doing a good job and follow, you know, making sure. So like I've gone in, the, uh, technically I was done work Sunday, but I've gone in every day, mon uh, Monday and Tuesday, and to do extra stuff, finish things up, help the new person. So, so anyway, so they said, okay, we'll release it to you, but I still haven't gotten it. So it's very- Are they gonna charge you back? Uh, are they gonna charge you back for the week in the apartment? No. Now, no let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. How far away? How far away is Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, from where you are right now? The other side of the seven world. Seven and a half hours flight. How much? Seven and a half hours flight. Okay, so it's uh, probably about four thousand miles, right? Five six. Okay. Five six. I, I, yeah. I saw on the news the uh, the other night that there was a big fire in a high rise in uh, Dubai. Uh, did they just have a, a, a really big fire? Yeah. Uh, not that I know of, but but it does happen. There's a lot of people who smoke out on their balconies. You know, they'll mm -hmm. throw the cigarette. And a lot of these uh, high rises are not up to code, you know. Well, they're up to uh, Dubai code. They're up to actually British code, I think. Really? And and the Brits had, had the problems first. And bad but, teeth. Yeah. <clears throat> But so anyway, the, the thing is, is that I still haven't gotten the money and I have, in theory, I should be getting dressed and going to the bank right now to close my bank account, but I can't close the bank account because in theory they have sent to it. And then I have to send from there to my U.S. account. So just a lot of stress, you know, hmm. wow. I have this uh, feeling in my throat. Like I have a pill stuck in it, and I read online it's called Globus Sensius or something, and it's uh, it's caused by stress and anxiety. Well, don't don't but... look don't look online for that. Uh, uh, Zantac, uh, that's uh, that's a uh, decongestant. Uh, but you know, hmm, I, they told me this was for the throat thing. Well, and, the, Zantac and, uh, is a... Stopping acid in the stomach. Uh, that's an over-the-counter uh, um, uh, decongestant here in America. Uh, excuse me. Uh, for stomach. It's uh, uh, yeah. for your stomach. Yeah. Yeah. It, you, it's a prescription over there? No, it's over-the-counter. Oh, it's over-the-counter. Okay. Because uh, uh, I don't the, have insurance right Well, now. you know something. Uh, I, um, I, as I say, I, went, I, I had this lump in my throat, and I looked it up. And I was sure I had uh, either, uh, um, what do you call it, um, uh, esophageal cancer or throat cancer. And it, it turned out it was a enlarged uvula, which in case people don't know what a uvula is, you remember in the cartoons when the mouse gets caught in the cat's mouth and he wants to get out and he starts using that thing as a punching bag? 
That's Pounce the them. uvula. Okay. Uh, the it's the same tower that burned before. It was the second time, and it did. And it happened Sunday. It's amazing how and out of context you yep. suddenly it, threw. The 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 uh, cladding uh, is flammable on the side of the building. Oh, is that the torch? Uh, it's seventy nine floors. It was an apartment. Yeah, there. yeah. I can actually see. Uh, no, I, I can I can see that when I walk to the grocery store. It's right over here. Yeah. Man. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Same 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 building, burned again Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I eat in a diner. Uh, there's a Syrian diner uh, in the, <clears throat> the the first floor of that building. It's yeah. really good. You ever tried a Jewish deli there? Really? Okay, <laughs> no let, let, me ask a, let me ask another question. Let's get off of that. Let, uh, let me ask yeah. another question about this whole thing about it, it, the President of the United States, if he wanted to, could he wear a uniform? Huh? The President of the United States, yeah. uh, they have a jacket with his crest on it, you know, that says, uh, you know, the president. I don't think he has a uniform. Well, that's why the remember. Surgeon General does. Uh, uh, y- yeah, but I'm saying because the Surgeon General can, can he? I don't think so. Huh. Because I- he's supposed to be a citizen commander. You know, mm-hmm. he's 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 not a he's the commander in chief, mm-hmm. but he's not. A member of the military as president yeah right? okay first Patrick and then Bree yes Patrick um, I forget the name of the gal who was a uh, surgeon general back I think it was during Reagan's administration yeah, yeah. Uh, she wore a what looked like a naval uniform whenever she was uh, giving any sort of speech or any uh, press photos, she was in uh, what looked to be a naval uniform. Hmm. Uh, Jocelyn Elders was her name. Uh, but there was another Surgeon General, a man, and I think he was under that, Reagan that, that as well. That was the guy with the, be- wore, with the beard, with the funny yeah, beard. Yeah, uh, the big mustache, I think. But. No, uh, with a beard. Oh, it was a beard? Mm-hmm. It was a beard with no mustache. Ah, okay. Yeah, uh, yes, Bree. General David Zarnoff. Who? RCA, General David Zarnoff. He wasn't a general. Zarnoff. Zarnoff. Remember? He wore a uniform of a general, and he made all his staff call him a general. But he huh. wasn't a general. But he wasn't a general. You know, what do they call that I, stolen valor? No, I think you're right. <clears throat> but he did. Did he call himself General Sarnoff? Yes, he did. He because did. I remember his history, and his history, you know who he was, what made him famous? He was the guy. Uh, yeah, Titanic. He the, was the operator during he, Titanic. He was the operator on uh, in the United States, I think, that picked up the signal yes. from the Titanic saying it was sinking. And That's, that's how, right. So all, those, all the wealthy people and famous people needed to contact him to see if their loved ones were alive. So he made a lot of connections. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I teach about him, and I, I've read a lot about him. Yeah, but he but he wasn't a, so you know he wasn't a general then, huh? No. Okay. But he did serve, so. All right. Uh, yes, pa- uh, Scott. Scott has a question. It's uh, uh, Scott C. Up there. Everett Coop. That's it. C. Everett. That, that was it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it says the Surgeon General wears a uniform because the organization uh, which she is the chief. Uh, the U.S. Public Health Service is a uniform service. It is not required apparel, but is said to command more respect and authority uh, when at official events and disseminating information. There we go. And there, here comes a picture uh, that... Uh, yes, the current one. I forget his name. Jerome something. He's, he's a quack. He's the quack that said that uh, <laughs> Trump is in perfect health. <laughs> I looked up Surgeon General and I went back and every one that I found was wearing similar uh, naval uniform. So, and C. Everett Coop was the same thing. And yeah. So. My question is, if if Trump is in perfect health, then what am I? You know? You a hypochondria. Superman. Oh, we just lost Bree, but he's coming back here, so it'll be okay. There we go. Okay. You there, Bree? 
You okay? So yeah, sorry about that. I hit I hit the button. I thought it was mute, and it actually <laughs> I, I'm, I have a Bluetooth. Well, it was that, the, that it, happens. It was the ultimate. Know. It was the ultimate. Uh, um, uh, what do you call it? it was the ultimate uh, mute. Uh, yeah. so. I have to hit the screen to mute. Which you know I something? Like. I, I really have to. Like I really have to say this uh, to the wonderful people at Skype. You really created a shitty program. You know, this should be as simple as is humanly possible for morons to use. And I'm not calling you a moron, Bree, because uh, you're uh, not a moron. And if it were built so morons couldn't fuck it up, you know, but, but I mean, just everybody we know has troubles with it, you know, because they're just too many yeah. little cutesy poo pictures that say nothing on them. You have share screen, you have open conversation. Uh, you have, uh, let me see here, what is that one? I don't even know what, uh, uh, call layout. Call layout, what is that? Anybody know what happens when you hit call p layout? Don't, you don't want to find out. I'm, I'm just <laughs> wondering if that maybe changes it to the old layout. You know, know, where you can put more people in there, something like that. Oh, I, you're right. A C. Everett Coop's beard looked like a Quaker or, or something. Yeah, yeah, I guess, you know, so anyway, so um, uh, so we so we we have we're going to have our parade and we're going to have uh, Trump giving a speech and I'll bet he mentions the Democrats. Oh, yeah. You know, which he shouldn't. It's just not the proper occasion to do it. It's supposed to be a non-political event. Can't help himself. He can't help himself. Well, there'll he, be a, he, he a could big wear crowd. It if he wanted to. Ooh, there's a fly. What what'd you say, Ibri? Uh, he fly. could wear a uniform if he wanted to. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. Uh, how about one Trump, Trump can do whatever he wants. He's a television star. How about how maybe a Bozo the Clown outfit? I got to go get the fly swatter. I got to fly in here. <laughs> <laughs> Will they charge you back uh, if you don't kill it? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Now, they let me stay here uh, up to a month. I can stay in the country and I can stay in the flat. But now, you know, looking back, I would have done it differently. I would have, they basically, they expect you to go quicker and they, they expect to transfer the money to your U.S. account. So when I told them I wanted it to my local account, that kind of threw them for a loop. But I'm like, well, I'm here for a week. But now I'm so nervous because I, I turn on my phone, I did not get it deposited overnight. And it's a really? local transfer. It should have happened within an hour or two. Uh, just be careful. Yeah. If they transfer it to your U.S. account, you may have some tax liability. Oh, yeah? Well, yeah. If it goes to the U.S. account, it's not kept offshore. I don't know. You'd have well, to... I'm, gonna, I'm going to be... No, no. I'm going to transfer it myself. Oh. But no, I don't have tax liability because I file my taxes. I have to go above a certain amount. You know. Yeah. He made it in another country. Yeah, even but if, he, if even it if winds he, up back in the U.S. Yeah, but I even don't if he if it the, winds up back in the U.S., I don't think he owes it as a U.S. tax unless it goes over a certain amount. Now, if he's a big right. corporation, they'll they won't if charge he, the if, tax. If he's a big corporation like uh, Amazon, he won't pay any taxes at all. Yeah. That was something, by the way, that I found out the other day that pissed me off. That this place, which I have been giving my money to constantly has not paid a shred of fucking taxes. But they charge you tax. <laughs> yes, but they haven't paid taxes. Uh, you know, what's with this? You know, I mean, come on. Uh -oh, somebody tried to... Here's some news from Dubai. Woman, Woman caught, caught smuggling, smuggling drugs, drugs inside, inside walnuts? walnuts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's actually, you got to think about it. This is pretty cool to have figured out to do that. Imagine but if you like anyway. walnuts and you were chowing well, down on well, it. Well, I guess the other one question we got to ask, uh, because it happened over the weekend, is our president uh, took a side trip to the uh, DMZ and finally stepped over the line. Oh, it's historic. Off. It's, it's a photo op. It's not historic. He's the first president ever to visit North Korea. It's still not you, historic. You know what's historic about it, Phil? Tell me. He didn't have to use a golf cart to go there. Well, there were steps. He couldn't. 
he could actually walk that far. Yeah. I, well, I Kim Jong Un was why I think having he did problems. It. What? Yeah. What were you saying, Bree? I, I think he did it because first of all, he loves a photo op. Yeah. Um, and and second, I think it was his. I think what he does is he's kind of placating. Uh, North Korea, you know, and Kim. He's kind of saying, don't launch any missiles. And then they've been getting antsy lately. Like, okay, we're not getting anything. All the sanctions are still there. Uh, so it's tough over here. So I think he went over to kind of say, just keep calm. Everything's going to be good. Yeah, I'm here. Let's do this. I'll invite you to the White House. And I think he's just biding his time until after the election when he won't really care. Well, I Bree, like, think about this. I, I changed my entire opinion of Trump when he got tough with Putin at that uh, G, what, G20 what summit. I keep, yeah. the numbers keep the changing. Uh, uh, when he got tough with Putin at that G20 summit, when somebody said to him, um, um, are, are you going to admonish uh, uh, Mr. Putin, or Prime Minister Putin, uh, uh, for meddling in American elections? And uh, uh, Trump said, "Don't do that as a joke." Didn't you see Trump slap his slap his hand? He no. did. No. Yeah. He did. No. He yeah. Didn't. It was worse than Melania when they got off the plane. He so he went like this to Putin. Don't do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, but it was that wasn't funny. That wasn't funny. And it, and it, it, you know, it, I don't know what he thought he was accomplishing. It is just amazing to me. And then he's he's with the 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 crown prince of Saudi Arabia. And he's kissing his fucking ass. Oh, did he, well? He's shaking hands there with him. Uh, in That's that, in after that he slapped him. But yeah, um, you, you, you know, if Alex were to go to Dubai and not say hi to Bree, I think Bree would be pissed off. Now, Al, uh, uh, Trump went to South Korea. He was just a hop and a skip away from Kim Jong Un, so he was doing the neighborly thing. Let's, and let's drop by. And let's drop hi. by and say and see the Kims. Right. Yeah. You know, hey, yeah. You know, you're in town. Yeah, don't in town. don't forget to say hi. You, you, and and if he didn't, when he got back to the United States, he might get a, a letter from uh, Kim saying you were in South Korea and you didn't walk over the line to say hello. Right. So that's just a yeah. neighborly thing to do. Right. I mean, you know, they're friends. Why not? I came here to, okay, so you go across the line and you say, I came here to get a cup of sugar. How's that? Yeah, but meanwhile, Pompeo and a couple of other people are starting negotiations again behind the scenes uh, for the uh, nuclear stuff going on in North, it's North Korea. It's not going to happen, Phil. Well, they started conversations. It's again. not going to happen. That's, this has been a lot of talk, talk going on here. Uh, time. Y you know, I mean, it it's the same way he is uh, coming to terms with the uh, with the Iranians. I mean, no way. Your buddy no Obama way. told Trump when they had the meeting in the White House and they were turn, you know, at, at the day that Obama moved out and the Trumps moved in, uh, that North Korea was the biggest threat that uh, Obama considered in the in the world, and uh, I think that uh, Trump is doing something. Uh, to address that. Why are you turning your picture on and off, Bree? Bree? Um, oh. I, I have I have an issue here. I cannot mute unless I turn off. Uh, there we go. There's something weird. I can't. I'm trying to mute because I got to brush my teeth. But I. It's not. Well, just, just don't, don't don't mute. Just go brush your teeth. Yeah. Well, you brush the teeth and make sure you have the camera in the right angle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go. Uh, you're muted. Go brush you're your muted. teeth. You're muted. Okay. Anyway, um, um, the, the fact of the matter was that, speaking of Obama, uh, uh, um, who was it? Trump gave a speech yeah. in which he was saying that uh, Obama... Begging. Huh? Begging, begging uh, Kim to come to Korea. Uh, no, no. Uh, the, the, the Obama never made any overtures... Oh. Right. To um, um, go to uh, South North Korea. No, he. And, no, and, and and the fact is, he did. Uh, according to his people, he did. Uh, Obama. No, no, he no, ordered no, Chinese that night. Uh, what? What were you, you saying? Got it what do you mean, Scott? What? Trump, Trump kept saying Obama was begging Kim Jong Un to come visit him. I mean, he. Obama wanted to go to North Korea and visit with him and talk mm -hmm. to him. Oh, okay. But he, he never did. 
Yeah. It, it, and and that was the lie that 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 Trump kept saying. He's like he was begging him, begging him to go in. He wouldn't. He wouldn't go. He wouldn't do it. But uh, but the uh, but uh, Obama never went to go see the guy. Uh, three or four people from Susan Rice and and Clapper and somebody else said that's just crazy. Obama never bet. Obama never went to go see Kim. Never well, went. I think the theory was, never made an effort. The, the theory was, and it was a good theory, by the way. Uh, the theory was that um, he um, that if you if you go over there, you give him cred, you give yeah. him some kind of credibility Sweet. that right. uh, puts him that you shouldn't let him be put into, you know. Right. Uh, and um, I think that's why he never did it. But he kept saying that Obama, something about Obama and that situation that was absolutely wrong, just completely wrong, a complete, absolute, out-and-out -out lie. Right. Uh, and uh, everybody, everybody caught him on it, you know. But he, of course, never, ever apologizes for anything he says or says, whoops, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Blah 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 blah, you know. Uh, he for, he hates Obama. He just hates oh, Obama because Obama put him down at that uh, that fucking uh, correspondence dinner, and Trump can't stand to have people make fun of him. He's very thin-skinned that way. Hey, did you see the thing that says uh, Forbin Colossus says that a dog bit him in San Francisco mm -hmm. and he barely got three thousand dollars in pain and suffering? I would think that if a dog bit Forbin Colossus, Forbin Colossus should have paid the dog three thousand dollars. <laughs> Actually, I think the dog would have gotten rabies, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, all hail Alex, a true veteran. Thank you for your service. Siri, 78 years old and still no bone spurs. Uh, I'm 79 and no bone spurs. Oh, look, we have an outside view. That's Dubai, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's very nice. That's very nice. Uh, can you say something to us? Um, um, He's brushing. No, it, oh, okay, let's see. I let's can. see here. Could I? Could I? Uh, yeah, I think I could get that picture. I can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, is we it can hear you. Out there? We can hear you. Skype yeah. Is, yeah. Skype has a delayed everything. Like I hit the mute, it takes three seconds. Wait a minute. Let seconds. me let me hold on a second. Let me. Uh, is is that construction sound that we hear from? If, why don't you yeah, shut they're, uh, they're, shut up, Phil, so that we can see the picture? Uh, if you talk, we can't see the picture. Oh. They may not like me taking a photo of that. It's a power plant. Oh really? Well, I think I'm not sure what it is. I, what's but I that think knock on the door? <laughs> what, what's there that? What's is that a Coca-Cola truck down there? You're oh, yeah. you're in yeah. fucking New Jersey. That's, that's uh, you're in here. New Jersey. It's Amazon. <laughs> this is Amazon Middle East. That's their tower. Oh, oh. really? That Microsoft is here. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Virgin is here. Um, Virgin Megastore. Their yeah. head, corporate head office is here. Wow. And over here is Tom. That's Thomson Reuters. Yeah. And CNN is over here. And then this is Al Hayat. It's a newspaper oh. in Arabic. And a big uh, a big garage there. Is that a garage we're looking at? Yeah, that's that's for Al Taraya Tower. They make satellite phones. Wow. And there's a. There's a lot of companies in there. There's something called Citrus TV, mm -hmm. which is like a home shopping network for this yeah. region. And then uh, Ipsos is there as well. They're a research company. Lots of lots of different kinds. Huawei is there as well. You know, you know what's funny about this? L looking at that and just looking down the street, you wouldn't know you were in Dubai. You know? I mean, you got a Coca-Cola truck there. You got a bunch of buses that look yeah. just like buses look here. You know. Oh, there's Arabic on there. Oh, really? Oh, okay. All right. And yeah. uh, you can see the street names are in Arabic. and. Yeah. But, yeah, you're right. You can yeah. see the palm trees. Yeah, and okay. That could be South Carolina, I guess. Right. We can't see the Burj Khalifa from there, right? No, I'd, ha I'd have to live on the other side. Oh, okay. 
because that is one but, fucking amazing building. But you can't see it. I can I can hold my iPad out there down the street. Mm -hmm. There's this beautiful red jaguar. Uh, it just sits there. It's cut, getting dust, and it's just a beautiful jaguar. And I just <laughs> wish somebody would take care of it. You know. Yeah. Maybe the guy's out of town. Well, it looks like a busy town there. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, there, there's our little tour, well, ladies and gentlemen, for you of uh, of uh, of Dubai, which is terrific. <clears throat> well, just my little corner. This is actually called Media City. Oh. So it, where you're moving, what kind of views are you going to have from there? Uh, th there's a, an unusual. Are you in Kuala Lumpur is where you're going? Yeah. Yeah. I have oh. a picture of the house. Yeah. Let's see if I can find it. Now, what's the job you're going to be doing in Kuala Lumpur? Uh, it's um, uh, sort of, uh, it's hard to explain. It's uh, kind of like a consultant for education curriculum design. It, I don't know. I have to see when I get there what they Does call that mean it. you're starting your own GabNet channel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is the house. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Uh, you, you, when that, you put, that's a big when, house, considering when you, when you put it going. too close to the to the camera, we can't see it because it gets blurry. Pull out just a little uh, bit, little bit. Uh, that's a very nice that, house. Yeah. They, what's the writing on that thing? Does that say Holiday Inn? Oh, no. Uh, no, <laughs> that's the guy's name, the agent's name. Oh. Uh, that's yeah. you're that's your going to be your whole Here's house. Here's a photo I took the other day, Phil. Could I win in your awards? Uh, uh, maybe journalism. <laughs> That's yeah. the Burj Al well, Arab back there. Yeah, but you see, we can't see it tunnel. because when you put, move it too close, your thing doesn't uh, focus in. It yeah. doesn't focus. It. Yeah. yeah. It turn turn your camera hard, uh, 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 landscape and see. Yeah. Now we. Yeah. There's the Burj Al Arab. Uh -huh. Burj means what? Burj, what does Burj mean? Building. Building. Yeah. So yeah, like in French, the room means street. Well, the Burj Khalifa is an amazing edifice. It is it it yeah. it makes your town look like it's the world of the future. You know. Uh, uh, here's the car that was outside yesterday. Nice. Yeah. Well, That's a Maserati. Car. And my friend took me to dinner last night in a Maserati. Yeah. They're not that comfortable to to ride in. Uh, <laughs> of course not. What did I ride in that? Uh, for, uh, you said a Lamborghini, I think. Lamborghini. It was the most uncomfortable car I've ever written, ridden in in my <laughs> life. A two hundred, a two hundred fifty thousand dollar Lamborghini. And There's my a new Lamborghini uh, that just came on the market for two hundred and three thousand dollars. It's an SUV. Really? Well, this I'm this sure this Lamborghini here. was a two hundred fifty thousand dollar Lamborghini that was given to him by his business partner. And how long ago was that? Oh, this was, this is when I was doing play TV. This was back in 1998. So that could have been a million dollar yeah. Lamborghini today. And who is that? That's my friend Maya. That's oh. your friend Maya. Yeah. Oh, here I am with the Burj. Oh, no, I'm that, Maya. there's the Burj Khalifa. <laughs> that thing is amazing. Yeah. And when, and when it's lit up at night, there are lights all around it and everything. It's just, you know. Yeah. Uh, so are you going to miss uh, Dubai? Oh, yeah. Really? I will miss it. What, what, what did you like best about it? Uh, diversity. There's true diversity here. You, you can meet people from all around the world every day. Yeah. And it, they're just, it's just awesome. I mean, yeah. I get my yogurt from a, yeah. a woman. She's from Cameroon. And uh, uh, by the way, I noticed I, in a, in a replay here, uh, in looking at the thing, you had your hand up there, Patrick. Do you remember what you were going to say? I would probably just oh, okay. Jump in class. Because I was looking at the monitor over here, and it's you know about thirty seconds earlier, and I heard, saw you going like this, and I he didn't take his spaz medicine. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> what my eye. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, whenever whenever I worry about my health, I, I start to think about Patrick and how well he takes his. So, you know, the one thing about Patrick is he is certainly not a hypochondriac. 
you know. And you have every reason to be. But you see, a hypochondriac is worried about things he might have and not worried about the things he does have. So, I, because I know whenever I really have something really wrong with me, I stop being a hypochondriac. I mean, I complain and say, you know, like now I'm using my thing about maybe the fact that I have prostate cancer uh, that I can't take out the garbage because of my cancer. <laughs> you know. Thank you, Reed. Thank you. I you laugh me. about it because I, whatever I, I, I've, I use that, whatever, I use that excuse for yeah, a, a year and a half. Whatever I've got is not what Phil had. It, 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 I have yeah. a, a, the non-aggressive version if I have it. You know. So yes, Patrick. Um, Tony, I I just looking at the stuff behind you, it just occurred to me. Um, I had an uncle die about a month and a half ago. <laughs> and the curtains and that wallpaper combined look like the inside of his casket. <laughs> oh, shit. Sure. Yeah, they usually wrap old Jews in something like that uh, when they bury them. They call it a shroud. Really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, um, uh, Candace D. writes here, Obama never wanted Kim to be on the world stage. That was his feeling about it. And, and uh, 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 Trump has put him on the world stage. Trump has given him. The guy has the, nuclear bombs. He doesn't have nuclear bombs. Not yet. Yeah, he no, does. He, doesn't. he blows them up. No he, no, he doesn't, Phil. And he's got ICBMs and all sorts of other crap. I see BM all the time when I look in the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you exploded. and if you don't think mine are deadly, <laughs> yeah, let Kim come over and see them. Yeah. You know. I, I tell you, when you when you have that uh, this this yeah. morning, I said I can't even go into the into the bathroom that I've been in there. Usually, you don't smell your own. Yeah. There's one thing. None of you can argue this. That you one time went to the bathroom. And had a turd of such an anaconda length oh that you didn't want to call people in to look at it. Am yeah. I right? I Be honest. Do you look to see if it's floating or not? The biggest one I remember ever Just having was in the <laughs> was in a pay toy was in a toilet uh, down in Atlanta during the Olympics, and I don't know how long that thing was. But you if I measured it, it was over a foot. I looked at it and I went, "My fucking god, did that come out of me in that one was the piece?" Range deer. In you one piece. piece. You, know? you see that you produce that kind of shit on a reindeer, you know, a reindeer burger, right? No, no, no. I'm talking oh, the Olympics in Atlanta. Atlanta. In where? Atlanta. Oh, oh. Okay, so you had barbecue. I went to the Olympics in Atlanta. That wasn't a big deal. I, I, it, they said, we're sending you there. to the Olympics. I said, well, you sent me to the Olympics in Albertville, and then you sent me to the Olympics in Barcelona, and then you sent me to the Olympics in, uh, in, in Norway, I said, in Lillehammer. I said, and now we're going to Atlanta? Fuck it. I don't want to go are, to fucking Atlanta. Are you the guy that handed the, the backpack to the security guard? I was there a day before that place blew up. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So I did. Yeah, I was the guy who did it. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! Let me let me get a theme song going here so we can get the hell out of here. You Is know. it that time? Well, any of your Antifa callers uh, can call tomorrow, and they won't have any resistance from uh, the Republican. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. Marjorie said she's coming on tomorrow night. Oh, the first oh, time in eight weeks. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Tell her I hope, and I'm sure everybody hopes that she feels better. And Scott, I need you to call tomorrow night so I have somebody. I might be here, I might not. Okay. Well, Patrick, I need you to call here so I might have somebody. I might, I might not. I, <laughs> I, I, so there's it, no it, show tomorrow it, it, because. If Patrick's I don't have any callers, I'm just not doing the show tomorrow night. And then, Bree, you can call tomorrow night. See, he there's there's a pal, but he might not be good. <laughs> he might be moving. He yeah. Might be in jail for taking our picture. Anyway, yeah. everybody, uh, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave back, okay? And I can't. I have to wave, and I have to also use my hand to change to the fade. There we go. 
Okay, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Everybody hung up really fast on me. Uh, but that's it. Uh, I'm hanging up here and leaving the phones ready for Jack Bishop, who's next with the intersection over most of this same gab net. Uh, we'll, um, we'll see you again uh, tomorrow night, hopefully with somebody calling, because everybody's going to be away. I, I should have taken the whole week off. Anyway, uh, stay tuned uh, for Jackie's next. Tomorrow night, Damien, oh, the franchise MC for the sports show at, uh, what is it, uh, 8.30 Eastern Daylight Time. 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time. It's Damien Chaplin with The Exchange. I'll see you tomorrow night. Same station, uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>